Hello, this is Dr. J back with some more. Let's play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Let's see what Navi has to say to us. Okay, so yeah, the giant ring of fire in the sky over Death Mountain, I noticed. Okay, so this brings us to a very relevant point. The What I consider the standard or natural order to do the dungeons in this game is forest, fire, Navi is directing us to the Fire Temple next, now that we're done with Forest. Then Water. Then Shadow, then Spirit. The events of the game kind of naturally point you toward doing the dungeons in that order. Every time I've played this game in the past, I have always done the dungeons in that sort of standard or natural order. Just to be different, this time... I'm not going to do the dungeons in that order. I'm going to switch it up and do a non-standard order. Uh, specifically, I'm planning to do the Water Temple next, so I'm going to be ignoring Navi, telling me to go to Death Mountain. Uh, and then I'm going to do Fire after Water. Okay, well, I tried to jump onto those rupees, and Link just idiotically face-planted instead, so that was great. Uh, so I'm going to do water, then fire. So I'm going to reverse the order of those two. And I'm going to do spirit and then shadow. So I'm going to reverse the order of those two. I've never done that before. So we'll see how this goes. Maybe it'll be a complete disaster. All right. Well, now that we have lifted the curse on the forest temple, things seem to be back to normal here in Kokiri Village. Let's go ahead and talk to everybody, see how they're all doing. Okay, well that was not a particularly interesting thing to say. Yeah, about that. Ah, these poor Kokiri children. They don't seem to comprehend the concept of growing up. Natural enough since they don't grow up themselves. As fae or fairy creatures. Yeah, you probably have. About that. Yeah, I think she's basically going to spend the rest of eternity in the Chamber of the Sages as one of the Seven Sages now. She seems pretty okay with it, which is fortunate. Probably not going to be anybody in here ever again. Kind of sad when you think about it. Kokiri have lost two of their friends forever. Well, they haven't exactly lost Link per se, but... Yep, sure has. Well, don't get too carried away now. We've only broken the curse on one out of five temples, so the wind can't be all that fair yet. I'm afraid you have the order of events reversed, guys. It was Link, then Fairwind. And that was no coincidence. Looks like Mido's not here in his house. Where's he gone off to, I wonder? Sorry, kid. I don't have time for that now. All right, well, we've got some things to do before we head to do the dungeons in a non-standard order and start 
on our Journey to the Water temple next. First, I'm going to check in on Lon Lon Ranch now that we have uh, woken up Talon. And presumably he's headed back there. See what might have changed. Honestly, he'll probably just be a drag on the place. Having Malin and Ingo running it is probably optimal. Talon's a net negative contribution to the cause. Alright, are you still just being weirdly, creepily obsequious? Yep, you sure are. So is Talon in the weird cuckoo room? No, he's not here. Unless he's upstairs. Don't mind if I barge into the uh, family bedroom. Nope, not here either. Where'd you get to, Talon? See, in the stable. That would be insane. Doing work? Could have fallen asleep in a bed of hay or something. Oh, he is here. And he's not asleep. I'm stunned and amazed. That's easy to say, Talon. We'll see how long that attitude lasts. Alright, does Malin have anything new to say? Singing away. She's doing well. Okay, so maybe if we talk to her from horseback. Because I know that there is a little mini game that we can do here. So perhaps that's the key to uh, unlocking it. I thought maybe we had to bring Talon back, but no, maybe we just have to talk to her from horseback. Yeah, it actually wasn't that difficult. You just play the right song for her and she's putty in your hands. Obstacle course. Sure, let's give it a try. Okay, I skipped over some text there because I was getting tired of reading explanations. If I screw up, I'm not going to do a bunch of attempts at this because the prize is not amazing. It's hilarious, but it's not amazing. Alright, lap one complete. Alright, was that a good time or not? I don't even know. Okay, did I, did I get anything for doing that? No, nah, once was enough. So if you fulfill conditions that I forget what they are, maybe you need a better time, maybe you need to do it multiple times, Malin sends a cow to Link's house in the Kokiri village, which is hilarious. And how do they even get the cow up there? But it's of pretty dubious usefulness. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to get that. But hey, it was nice to check in on our friends. And our one true waifu. So. Next stop, we're going to head to Kakariko Village. There is a certain something that I would like to get there. Now that I have the bow. 
because much like bombs, I consider the bow essential enough that I want to be able to carry as many arrows as possible. Ah, night is falling. Go, go, go. Hey, we're here at sunset again. I do like the quiet, kind of pensive atmosphere of twilight. In fiction as well as in real life. All right, so in order to get a bigger quiver, we're going to have to actually do the shooting gallery game and we're going to have to actually do well at it. So let's give this a shot. I know I keep complaining about this, but the aiming is so oversensitive, it's ridiculous. I just barely touch the stick and it's all over the place. Alright, alright, pressure's on now. Cool. In the interest of not making myself out to be better than I am, I did cut out about half a dozen failed attempts. Huzzah! The big quiver is ours. All right, excellent. That's done. Thank you, good sir. All right, so... Next up, I actually took some notes for everything I want to do to try to keep it organized. As long as we're in the neighborhood... I highly doubt she says anything new, but let's see if Cuckoo Lady has anything to say. Probably not. Nope. I don't think she'll say anything new for the rest of the game. Once you do that part of the trading quest, I think that her role is pretty much done. Alright, but as long as we're in the neighborhood. Next, we're going to go up Death Mountain Trail just a little bit. Not very far, because like I said, we're doing the dungeons in non-standard order. But we are, as long as we're here, at least going to go to that flying lily pad that we planted, and that should lead us to a heart piece. We can one-shot the Tektites now, so that's pretty cool. Yay, Master Sword. Okay, there's rolling boulders now. I do like that ominous ring of fire. That's pretty cool looking. <laughs> they make such funny noises. Okay, that seemed real cheap. But whatever, we got a piece of ha. Ta to piso. Okay, next we're going to go to Lake Hylia, and I guess that's enough of a journey that I'll go ahead and cut it out and meet you there. Alright, we're almost there. Epona makes travel faster. But she refuses to jump over that fence. Hopefully she'll jump over this one. There we go. Huzzah, look at us go. We're such a good jockey. All right, now the reason we've come back here is it's a little out of the way, but I think it's time to activate Pierre the Scarecrow so that he can be a convenient hookshot target for us. Also, uh, Lake Hylia has seen better days. Good lord. Some kind of severe drug going on. It's like Lake Mead over here. That curse is just affecting everything, it seems. Hey, Bonoru. Wow, you uh, you recognize me a lot better than most people do. I sure did grow, too. <laughs> sure, baby. Okay, I think I did down, right, down, right, down, right, didn't I? That's it. That's the tune. What a hot beat, as Darunia might say. Ah, yes, this is how we have to be Pierre. 
Okay, cool. So that's going to be quite useful to us. And that's all I wanted to do here. Uh, so consulting my notes real quick. All right, next up, I want to go to Zora's River. All right, here we are, and we arrived at night, which is convenient, because there are some gold skulltulas that I want to get here. Oh yeah, I guess while I was in Kakariko, I could have gotten the next, uh... The next Skulltula House prize. Oh well, like I said, it's pretty crappy, so it doesn't really matter. We'll get it the next time we're in the neighborhood. It's the one when we hit 50 Skulltulas that's actually good. There it is. Okay, can't quite reach it. Hmm. What if I stand precariously on this fence? Huzzah. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's more Skulltulas than that, but uh, well, we found one and that's better than zero. Now let's check in on our friends here at Zora's Domain. Things weren't looking so good at Lake Hylia, what with the water drained and everything. That's not quite right. Hey Zoras! Your home is looking kind of, um, inanimate. Well, this is a disaster. Zoras won't be able to live like this. How about the king and Princess Ruto? Navi, what the heck? Shut up, Navi. I'm doing the dungeons out of order. Get over it. At King Zora, your majesty. That looks uncomfortable. Well, this is just a complete disaster. We're going to have to find a way to save the king and figure out where the heck Ruto is. We can't be without Hera member number 47. Turns out King Jabu Jabu, or I mean Lord Jabu Jabu, is also gone and has been replaced with a giant uh, slab of ice. In fact, there's... Giant slabs of ice all throughout Zora's Fountain now. As well as more irritating Octoroks who get off cheap shots on us. Because that's the way they like to do things. Now I think there's a harp piece on here somewhere. There it is. Another irritating Octorok. No, Link! No! I feel that I've been cheated. And got cheap-shotted at the same time. This is quite irritating. Oh, we have to make our way all the way back and do that jumping over again. We were on the freaking... whatever the heck it is. It's not Glacier. Iceberg. It's not big enough to be an iceberg. Ice platform. We'll go with that. Is 
There we go. We did it. We got a piece of heart. Ha dopey soul. And now, if the camera would cooperate, there's something else here at uh, Zora's Fountain that demands our attention. Uh, I feel like I'm really being screwed by the camera here. It is not pointing in helpful directions. Practically jumping blind. All right, let's try this again. Octoroks are real obnoxious, too. Uh, okay, this way. Also, ice physics. Everybody hates ice physics. There we go. All right, so there's this mysterious cavern. The Ice Cavern. Which gets some pretty cool music. This is what might be termed kind of a mini dungeon or sub dungeon. It's not one of the game's nine major dungeons. The way I'm coming up with the number nine is the three dungeons you do as Child Link, the five temples, and then Ganon's castle. In addition to those, there's a couple of little sub-dungeons, and this is one of them. So those guys are not very friendly. I think they're called Freezards. If we stand within their ice breath, then they will freeze us. But the hookshot will pull us toward them and stun them at the same time, so it's pretty handy. What's Navi have to say about them? Yep, it's a Freezerd. Watch out for its freezing breath. Destroy it completely before it revives. Okay. The trap kind of screwed us there. Okay, the trap is screwing us over a lot. I'm developing a hatred for that trap. Okay, a severe hatred for it. There, we got all the freezers and it opened up the gate. What do you want, Navi? Is this somewhere I can play the uh, Scarecrow song, that incredible tune I made up to summon Pierre? No, I have no idea what Navi's trying to draw my attention to there. Oh, those are some friendly giant ice size, and I think this is the first time we're introduced to the uh, mechanic of collecting silver rupees as though we're collecting red coins in Mario. Also, I hear a Skultula. I hear it, but don't see it. Maybe it's hiding behind one of those red ice walls. Okay, whatever. Thanks for the heal. Oh, there's the Skulltula right there. Nice. How many more silver rupees? There's one up in the air there. Superb. And then we get teleported onto the ground. 
you know, I thought that you could roll through those to take no damage, but either I'm doing it completely wrong or I was just straight up incorrect about that. Another freezer to deal with, and more traps, and ice physics all at the same time. Good fun, good fun. Get out of the way, whatever. Get wrecked. Oh man, if you thought the previous rooms were annoying, welcome to hell. At least these keys can't burn our shield, but they can freeze us solid, I think. There's freezers everywhere, and ice physics everywhere, and platforms we have to jump on, and traps all over the place. This room is just a barrel of laughs. Quit sliding around. What's your problem? breathing at me. You're gross. I got nervous and yep, I knew it. Dang it! I hate them. Die. For crying out loud. You know, people say they hate water dungeons. I hate ice dungeons. I seem to remember actually liking the water temple in this game, which probably makes me weird. We'll see if that memory holds up. But this ice cavern? Extremely irritating. Thanks, Navi. Maybe I can indeed. I hear a flapping key, swear is this stupid thing. Anyway, what we have to do with this fire, which makes perfect sense, because of course this is what you do with fire, is we put it in a bottle. And I want to be able to use a lot of this stuff at once so I don't have to make tons of trips, so. Much as I hate wasting fairies, right now I need the bottle capacity. Later, fairy. All right. And now that we have acquired blue fire, so what does blue fire do? Why, it melts red ice, of course. Everybody knows that. So now I'm going to backtrack. I think this place has a dungeon map, right? Yeah, it does. I'm actually going to backtrack because I saw red ice in the previous room. Good grief. These guys respawned already. You know what? I'm just going to run through here. I'm not even going to mess with them. Screw you, trap. Nobody cares. You're not cool. You have no friends. Okay. I'm going to melt this red ice and see if there's anything worthwhile in here. Okay, that's taking us to a whole new area. I think there was more red ice as well, was there not? Yeah, over here. Let's see what this does. I think you could angle your slash downward just a little, Link. It's not that tough a concept. Ah, there's more blue fire we can get in here. Keith's trying to 
fly into the blue fire in order to turn itself into a freezing keys. You've probably noticed you can also purchase blue fire at shops, although it's obscenely expensive, so it's not worth it. Since you can just get it for free where you need it. We got a piece of hot! Ha, ah, dopey soul. One more and we get a hot container! I hear a Skulltula. I see a Skulltula. I do not have my hookshot equipped. Nice. How many are we up to now? 45. Five to go and... I mean, I'll keep on collecting them, but at that point we'll pretty much have all the Skulltulas that I care to get. So I'm definitely not going for all 100. All right, we got the compass. Get wrecked, you. Stupid keys. Okay, let's refill our bottles with more blue fire. And it looks like we're done with this little room. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Okay, blue fire in every bottle. It's a campaign promise. Two cars in every garage and blue fire in every bottle. All right, let's see what lies this way. Ah, I recall this room. We have block pushing puzzles to solve and silver rupees to collect. And freezing keys to annoy the hell out of us, because of course, of course there are. Maybe I should just clear the room of these obnoxious things, first of all. Actually, that's the reverse of what I normally have. There we go. Oh yeah, let's keep in mind we don't have any fairies right now because we filled our bottles with blue fire, so... We don't have a free uh, revival if we run out of hearts, so we should be a little more cautious than normal. And yes, I see that gold Skulltula. Come on, lock on, Navi, lock on. Hello there, good sir. Da, da, na, na, na. Four to go. All right, now we're gonna need to push this block around in order to get at most of these silver rupees. And it's an ice block sliding puzzle, of course, which means we can't push it around at will. We just give it a push and it just flies in that direction forever. I think if we push it into a pit, it respawns at its original location. I wonder if Pierre will show up in one of those locations. Pierre is not real talkative, but he is very handy. It's 
kind of confusing all the different areas that Navi tries to highlight in this dungeon, and I don't know why she highlights them. Like, what are you even trying to show me? That didn't do anything. What if I stand closer? All right, maybe that's not a pure location then. Okay. Now we push the block this way. It's actually not an especially difficult puzzle, really. He says as he completely screws it up. Okay. Foot insert mouth. Um... Oh, okay, well, this looks simple enough, since it just respawns like that. This way, and this way. Voila. This silver rupee is contained within red ice, as you can see. Captain an obvious thing of my own. What the crap? I feel that I've been cheated. I feel like that it should have a little more range on it. Irritating. Thank you. Okay, it's the last silver rupee. And the way forward is unlocked. I don't know if we're going to be needing more blue fire, um, but I guess we should grab some as long as we can. So let's go ahead and push this guy into the pit, see if we can push him to where we can refill our blue fire. That looks like, I don't know why I'm calling it him, and it looks like then we can push the block over to the west to move on to the next area of the ice cavern. More blue fire for us. Da -na -na -na. And yet more blue fire. Okay. Now we need to reset the block yet again. And this time we need to push it over there. So it looks like the way we do that is... All right, let's figure this out. If we push it here, then it goes to there, and then it would hit that, and then that, and then we can push it there. So that looks correct to me. Basically pushing it around in a circle. Surprise Link isn't freezing to death in this place. I mean, I guess the clothes he's wearing look fairly warm. Fingerless gloves, though. Man, his fingers must be just about to fall off. Another freezer day. I'm going to temporarily put the ocarina back on left so I don't accidentally use up some blue fire. Whatever. I 
I seem to have missed the dungeon map. That might have been back in the room where we first found the blue fire. Huh. Ah, a door. Oh, this is a neat looking room. And we run into a new kind of wolfos. It is a white wolfos. And it dies instantly. Okay, that was a pretty underwhelming mini boss. Why did you even bother playing boss music for that game? That was silly. We got the iron boots. So heavy you can't run, so heavy you can't float. Hey, Sheik. We do meet again. With one exception, eh? Would that be Princess Ruto? Narrative convenience would suggest it must be. Oh, okay. And then Sheik just straight up tells us that's the case. This is a really cool looking room though. Boy, man. Boy, man. Good lord. I'm so tired. Don't even have sensible exclamations. Uh, what I was trying to say is, every time these temples fall under a curse, everything in the area seems to get totally screwed. Kokiri Forest got filled with monsters. Water Temple is causing everything to get frozen. A serenade, huh? You know, Sheik, I'm uh, I'm really flattered and all, but uh, I'm afraid the harem's kind of full up. So, uh, I, I think I'm going to have to decline your overtures. Bye, Sheik. Alright, well that's the uh, the Ice Cavern complete. Neat little mini dungeon. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that the... Uh, yeah, you can see the, the only chest we missed was in the area where we first got the... the blue fire. And I remember that I didn't go all the way in that room. So that's probably where the dungeon map was. I don't think we actually missed anything of importance in here. Now, before we move on, uh, we've still got other things to do. So I'm not going to be going straight to the Water Temple just yet. First of all, we have to free King Zora. Uh, I think that's actually just straight up required before you can actually get to the Water Temple. Because he's going to give us the Zora Tunic, which allows us to hold our breath underwater indefinitely. And then there's some other uh, additional extra secrets that we're going to get before we enter the Water Temple as well. I think there's a shortcut to get out of here. This water pit. Gives us a chance to try out our fancy new iron boots. Excellent. I know I can't breathe underwater. Calm down. Okay, so yeah, that was a nice little shortcut. Takes us almost right back to the entrance. So, I didn't really need to cut anything out after all. 
Thanks for not making me backtrack through the whole dungeon game. That was thoughtful of you. Alright, well we still have some blue fire in our inventory. And we have learned that blue fire melts red ice. So, let's go free the king. Hey, King Zora, you big fish sickle. I've got something that I think can help with your condition. And we apparently have to get real close because this stuff does not have range. Quite irritatingly. Be freed! Nice dramatic camera angle there. Great close-up view of whatever the heck that is. I'll bet he still makes us address him from this platform. You sure have. You're welcome. I do indeed, yes. Good observation. Do I have to take it respectfully? Yes, or a tunic acquired. What, Navi? Shut up, Navi! Oh my god, she is obsessed with Death Mountain. Anyway, now we can put on the Zora tunic and look real spiffy. You can see that we're doing the dungeons out of order by virtue of the fact that we're skipping a tunic. Cool, I like it. What else do you have to say, your majesty? Yep. Oh, that's it? You seem pretty chill about that. In fact, you seem pretty chill about everything that's happening here. Well, it's good to be carefree, I suppose. Okay, so uh, our next destination is actually going to be, now that we have the um, Zora's tunic, we're going right back out to Zora's fountain again. I don't think we need any more blue fire, so... There we go, back to our standard array of items. So now that we have the Zora's tunic and the iron boots, some new avenues of exploration have opened up to us, such as the bottom of Zora's fountain here. Down, down we go into the depths of the abyss. There's rupees down here, but there's something a lot more exciting. We go to the deepest point. We get a piece of hot! Ah, don't be so. We have four of them, so we now have a new hot container! Well done to us. Our next destination is going to be Lake Hylia. We cannot take this shortcut to reach it because it's all frozen under ice, but that doesn't really matter because Sheik has taught us to serenade of water, which will teleport us where we need to go. And I wasn't really paying attention while he's teaching us that. Sorry, Sheik. I was too busy being tired and making sarcastic remarks. A down, right, right, left. Good lord. Okay. Let's go. So we're finally acquiring some fast travel techniques, but with these warp songs and stuff we're learning. That, that's pretty cool. I appreciate that. Wow, uh, things are... It's kind of a dramatic storm going on here, isn't it? And there goes my cat's automated food dispenser. So, the water temple, the entrance to it is right there. 
as shown by those stone posts. But we're not going there yet. First, let's check in on our old friend, the guy who runs the fishing spot. Because we love fishing mini games, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. Get wrecked, you blue tech type. In order to get up there, we're going to need a helping hand from our friend Pierre. All right. Our first successful summoning of Pierre the Scarecrow. We thank him for his appearance by putting a hook shot in his chest. He seems pretty okay with it. And now we can access the fishing pond. I can't imagine business is exactly booming under the circumstances. Hey, nice hat, dude. I don't think he had that before, did he? It has been a long time. How's it going? Hey, well, you know, being frozen in some kind of magical stasis, as people do. Uh, am I your only customer ever? Oh, that's why you're wearing the hat. <laughs> I will go fishing because I'm a sucker for fishing mini games. I, I understand, yes. So we need to get a fish that's, I forget, like 15 pounds or more in order to get the next prize. Let's fish. That is a huge fish! It's bigger than Link! Oh man, but I think it's one pound short of what we need. Oh, that was actually good enough after all. So it doesn't have to be 15 pounds. 14 pounds does the job. This is a golden scale. It looks pretty green to me. I guess there's a gold scale inside a green sphere, actually. Uh, this allows us to dive much deeper than we used to be able to. Oh, right. I have to manually return the rod. 
Now that might not seem very useful considering we just got the iron boots, which effectively allow us to dive as deep as we want to. But in fact, it does have at least one specific use. Remember, the Lakeside Laboratory scientist told us that he was measuring how deep we were diving. Now, if we use the iron boots, he's actually not going to be impressed. However, if we dive for real, using the golden scale, which now allows us to dive deeper than we could before, that will yield some results. Wow. Seven years on and you're still alive, huh? Considering how skeletal you were looking to begin with, that's kind of an impressive achievement. Well, how's it going? How you been? Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I did meet her, actually. Okay, I think that's the same thing that he said before. Now, we actually are going to want to put on the iron boots once anyway. Because with the iron boots on... Well, first of all, we can collect all these rupees. All right, we're almost at maximum now. And secondly, if we roll into that crate, it reveals gold skulltula, which we can acquire with the hookshot. I like how the sound effects really sound like things are underwater when you're underwater. They're all muffled. It's pretty cool. All right, let's see if he has anything to say about our, uh, our little bout of cheating there with the iron boots. He has nothing to say whatsoever. However, if we actually just straight up dive, oops, with our new golden scale that should let us dive all the way to the bottom. We trigger the you have solved a puzzle, Diddy. Yeah, I know, you're kind of creepy like that, dude. But he's so impressed. He gives us a piece of heart. Ah, do be so. Nice. While we're out here. I think that we can use Pierre to get on top of the roof of the Lakeside Laboratory. Once again, we'll thank him with a hook shot to the face, except it looks like we need to get a little closer. We, we can do it. Okay, you know what? Why on earth did I not just ride that? Why did I even think I needed Pierre? I'm a little slow sometimes. I hear flapping and battle music. Get out of here. For crying out loud, still man should get a hit in on me. Alright. I think there's a gold skulltula that we can get. Is what I'm trying to do here. Oh, well, we can get another piece of heart. Ah, uh, don't be so. Maybe I already got the Skulltula. Okay, I think I did. Anyways, that pretty much concludes all the extra secret stuff that I wanted to get. Now, we can proceed onward to the next major dungeon of the game. The Water Temple. Many people's most hated temple... As I said, I remember actually kind of liking this one. We'll see if my memory holds up. Either way, hopefully you'll join me for that. And I'll see you then.